Hey guys, um, this is a short video about a problem that uh, very often comes up in production. So uh, usually uh, uh, you have um, some kind of a vehicle, you know, plane, train, car, um, ship, whatever. Uh, thin shelled stuff, you know, metallic and um, the, the geometry that you want to simulate with is uh, lightweight. So, you know, you don't want to simulate with like heavy geometry. Um, if you have a sim that you like, sometimes the asset has changed from underneath you. Um, sometimes pieces have been added or something like that. And you want to transfer this animation to the high resolution geometry for rendering. So, uh, to do it in an efficient way, uh, we have a few options, you know, basically that uh, we're going to go through. So first you want to uh, create some proxy geometry for your simulation so you don't simulate with anything that's um, too heavy. And the um, easiest way to do, to do this kind of thing, you know, you do a VDB so you abstract yourself from the underlying topology and you uh, create the uh, meshes from that and you fracture that. So goes into the simulation, which you know you have set up to do the, the stuff that you like, you know, getting hit by things or like gliding, whatever. And then the interesting part comes. So um, few options here. Now, um, in some cases, you have jointed geometry, and um, not all of the pieces break off. So some of them uh, hinging, um, some of them you know which have just uh, bent a little bit. So you want these uh, bends to be preserved. And um, straightforward way to do this is to use a point form to get the animation from the simulation onto the render geometry. So um, I'm packing uh, this uh, simulation geometry, and then time shifting to the first frame to use with a point deform which has uh, which uses the um, points from the simulation as a lattice. Uh, now the issue with that is obviously that you get these outstretched polys um, where the uh, breaks have happened so where there is no breaks you're fine you know you're just gonna have some nice bending yeah you're not gonna get an edge between the pieces it's nice but where the bending, uh, but the breaking does happen, you need to get rid of these polys. So to do that, you can measure the perimeter um, before and after the break has happened, before and after the point deform has happened, and then uh, you can calculate the difference in these. Um, I have uh, apps here because I don't really care about the sign; just want to see how much difference that is there is. And whenever the difference is too is too much, you can delete. Basically, the ones that ha that have become stretched, they're the ones that have um, um, deformed uh, too significantly. So um, you compare the their original um, perimeter with their um, deformed perimeter, and when the difference is too much, you just delete them. Um, then you can extrude afterwards, which is cool because the modeling people would prefer that they not deliver you uh, shelled models because <clears throat> they create all kinds of problems, you know, in um, when you're modeling it's much cleaner and easier to model with uh, without shells. So if you if, if you tell them, um, yeah guys I can take care of the shelling for you, they will like well, not about for that. And it makes life easier. And then you can do some extra processing here to make uh, these edges where things break a bit smoother and so on. Um, but that's basically it. And you can cash this out. Um, so it has, this, this approach has the benefit of being uh, letting you kind of um, soft skin uh, pieces, uh, getting uh, the, the forms where the joints had been in the simulation, so no edges there. Uh, but the drawbacks is that this is actually deforming geometry cache. So in a, in a heavy asset, this would be heavy. Uh, you know, you have like a one gig asset, and then you're gonna hit, you're gonna be saving all these points every frame. So you know, this would be heavy. Um, of course, you could yeah, um, you could maybe do some kind of an intermediate step maybe. Uh, but yeah, that's a bit more sophisticated. So. Uh, if you want to avoid these issues with the heavy setup, uh, with the heavy cache, sorry, you can go the packed geometry route. 
So this will not allow you to do the, the bendy things, which are um, some things that happen to the vertices of every frame, but this is going to let your cache be very light. And um, that's basically the usual route that we go for rigid bodies with the transform pieces. But the extra part is that we want to somehow transfer the information from the uh, simulation to the heavy geometry about which piece is which. Because, you know, the render geometry does not know about this part. Like, it doesn't know that this is a separate piece. So we have to transfer this uh, information to it. And if we unpack and time shift, so we deal with only the first frame, um, we can do an attribute transfer. So you can see, you know, this is the the uh, simulation geometries, um, name attribute visualized, and this is the transfer attribute. And after that, you can assemble as usual, and uh, you tell it not to explicitly create, a, create a name attribute and not connecting the inside edges because you don't want these um, connections to form. You just want the, um, the named uh, pieces as they were. And you transform pieces just like uh, you do with rigid bodies. So this is uh, leaving you with a cache that you can run, um, do something that you can cache out, and this will be packed and, and quick. If you want to create the shells, um, let's say you want you need the shells for rendering, you can have an extra step, step which is adding the shells. Uh, then you will need to take care about what happens to the normals. On the borders, you might have some issues there um, that need take an extra setup to, uh, to fix. Uh, but you can also just render both of these and then you blend between them in comp, like fix the normals where you know they are a problem. And that's basically kind of your three basic options. A lot uh, to go from here, but it's good to have a solid starting point. Thank you guys.